So, Gillingham are now safe, so I thought I would wear a German shirt with the same uh, classic colours of Gillingham, albeit in the horizontal direction. So, uh, no prizes really for guessing this one because it pretty much says it right there. <laughs> The German Judge YouTube channel now has a subscription service which you can pay €2.99 a month to be part of to get little extra perks and to support the channel and it's called the 1893 Club. There should be a join button underneath this video if you are interested in supporting the channel in this way. If you would like to support the channel in a more traditional way, you could also do the buy me a coffee. The link to that is in the description down below. And if you donate and leave a message uh, when you donate, I will read it out in the next video. And if you'd like to reach out to German Jewels, you could do so for a WhatsApp. The link to that is in the description. I will respond to every message. And it's also where you could get involved with the German Jewels fan zone also. Welcome to German Jewels. Jewels head up north to take on promotion chase in Bradford City in their penultimate away match of the campaign. Your German Jewels show bringing you a live match reaction today from your host, Reese. With the Jewels now safe, will this be the hardest prediction Luke will have to make this season? German Jules has come in live from Duisburg, Germany to see if the Jules can spoil a promotion push at Valley Parade. Schön, das du da bist und los geht's Jules! Welcome to the German Jews show as Gillingham take on Bradford City away at Valley Parade this afternoon. Gillingham really have nothing else to play for. They've secured their safety, whereas Bradford still are challenging for the playoffs this latter end of the season. I'm going to be your host, Reese, to take you through every step of today's game. Thank you very much for stopping by on this German Jills show. And if you would like to follow our socials, you could do so on Twitter at Deutsch Jills. And of course, we're on Instagram, which is German Jills. If you would like to go straight to the live match reaction, use the chat that's at the bottom of the video to navigate around. Now, the season's pretty much over for Gillingham. We've got nothing to play for apart from pride. So Neil Harris has a big opportunity to mix it up and change it around. So it'd be really interesting to see how Luke's 11 will turn out this afternoon. Hello and welcome to another edition of Luke's 11. After Tuesday night's 2 nil win against table topping Leighton Orient, today sees us travel to promotion chasing Bradford City. And the big question on everybody's lips is, can we spoil another final promotion push. Swindon's winner against City sent the Leighton Orient fans into raptures in the dark at Priestfield on Tuesday, and I'm sure they'll want to put that result right in front of their home 20,000 fans today. In Harris's post-match, he told us that he'll be picking teams to win their remaining three games and to finish up as high as the table as possible. I think we'll see some personnel changes today. However, I think the side will remain largely the same. So let's get to it. Jake Turner's been unlucky over the last few weeks, being completely bombed out of the sides uh, to allow for that extra substitution. Um, and I think he might get a go in between the six this weekend. Um, he's been largely reliable when called upon this season. Um, and yeah, I think he, he deserves a chance to, again, see what he can do. Because I think Jake has really got a future at this club um, and could be the number one in two to three years' time. I can't see the back line being changed uh, with Alexander, Aimer, Masterson and Mackenzie all to feature. In midfield, I think we'll see Ethan Coleman replace Sean Williams with Tim Deang, Tom Jeff Dom Jeffries and Alex McDonald keeping their places within the start and 11. Up front, a return into the lineup for Ollie Hawkins with partnering with Tom Nichols. With the recall of Josh Chambers, I can see him being named as a substitute alongside Jaden Clark, Lewis Page and Tammy Abraham, Tristan Abraham, sorry. I'd love these four to get a substantial amount of minutes today and give them an opportunity uh, considering they've been on the fringes uh, for the majority of them since um, the January transfer window um, and obviously Lewis over the last few months. Um, be good to see again what they can do. Score prediction for me, I think we'll get a point. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. Los Gets Jules. We do have a German Jules reporter today. Adam Westgate will not be heading up to Valley Parade, but funnily enough, his dad is, but his dad didn't really fancy being on the German Jules show. However, we do have our Northern Jules correspondent with Kieran, who's going to give us his thoughts for today's match against Bradford. Good morning, Jules fans. Bradford City away today and hoping for a game that doesn't end as bizarrely as it did against Leighton Orient when we beat them 2-0 on Tuesday night. 
up to, today, to today's game. Now that we are safe from relegation, I'm hoping that we play with a bit of freedom today and express ourselves a bit more and hopefully nick out a little win. I really want to see Jake Turner start today and Ethan Coleman. I love those two players, two of my favourite players at the club right now. And yeah, prediction for today, 2-1 Gillingham. I'm feeling optimistic, um, especially after we beat Leighton Orient on Tuesday and Bradford lost to Swindon. I think they're going to feel a bit um, down on themselves. Andy Cook's not scoring well at the minute as well, which helps, and he scored against us last time out. So 2-1 Jules win, and Hawkins and Lapsley to score. So let's have a listen to the German Jules fan zone of all the fans that have contacted us about this game this afternoon. I think today's result is going to be 2-1 to Jules against Bradford City. I know it's going to be tough out there, but the last two games we've seen pro that can do it. 2-1 uh, Jules and it's going to be Nicole. Let's head over to Priest for stay in for today's live match reaction. Lost Gates Jules. So we are underway here at Valley Parade as Jill's trying to try and get a, at least a decent performance away from home. I just want to say a couple of shout outs, obviously, to Jackson. He's going for a 1 0 win today, which is very bold against a, a promotion chasing Bradford City side. And um, we've got Craig who's going for a goal galore's 2 all result today. And I, I would take that. <laughs> I'd take anything away from Valley Parade this evening, uh, this afternoon. Uh, but let's see how this one unfolds today. So Laps has got the ball. He's broken down the left-hand side and given the ball to Nichols. There's been a bit of an altercation there. I think that's with uh, Crinchlow. But uh, Dieng's hit the ball up as he's trying to work away through. Jill's got an early chance here and it goes to McDonald. He just can't get quite through, but can it be a shot instead? There is, and it's been blocked and it's gone out for a corner. Quite a chaotic start for, uh, for Gillingham and Bradford. <laughs> and uh, Gillingham did get the first opportunity of this half. Moving forward, it was uh, Coleman. It was it looked like he got the shot away. Good work from Gillingham. Good defending by Bradford. And I think, uh, I can't quite see the number. It was uh, um, Rydal who managed to get the, the deflection. Uh, it might not be. I couldn't quite see that one. But it is a Gillingham corner right on the front foot to begin with. So Bradford are now coming down. That is Cook. That's it. It's headed it down for Walker. He's going to run on. He's passed that through to the right-hand side. That's going to be Banks on the... Who's passed it then? I can't see that score, but it's a good shot, but it's cleared by Aimer on the line. I <laughs> As Bradford are really showing what they made. I think it was Small with the captain who got the initial shot, which Aimer had to block on the line. And Bradford have finally got into this game and created something. And it looks like it's going to be Marston that eventually clears that up. Bradford finally showing what they're made of and showing some real attack in a 10 as it goes over the top. And that's going to be, well, great for a goal kick. Oh, Morris was beating that one and it was Max Aimer who managed to get behind the ball and clear these mat uh, clear uh, clear off the line. It was uh, Banks on this right hand right hand side for Bradford. Found this gap. There's two Bradford City players there, Gillingham. What are you doing? And they should be doing a little bit better, Bradford, there as well. They'd be disappointed. They didn't have a better shot. That was um, Richie Smallwood for Bradford. Should be doing a little bit better. Jill's got away with that one because it really did open up for Bradford. <laughs> and they're really showing that they're going to come at us this game. Still nil-nil. Oh, Dieng's deep possessed. That is um, cringe though at the back there. Can Dieng get through and get a shot on goal? And he's great. So Virginia has take the shot himself. And Jules have gone one nil up with Dieng. And he's deep possessed cringe though and beat him to the box and managed to put the ball in the left-hand corner, which beats Lewis to his right-hand side. And Jules have gone one nil up and possibly started to put a, pop a pin in, uh, in the balloon of Bradford's playoff promotion. It's really bad work that is from Crinchlow. He doesn't need telling, even though Sam Stubbs is telling him something. Maybe just to try and get up his spirits after a calamitous defensive error. But I have to say, Dieng, Timothy Dieng, saw the opportunity, then managed to strength off. That was Nevers and find the ball in the bottom left-hand corner and have gone 1-0 up early on in this match against Bradford. And... and <laughs> Oh, this could be a goal opportunity for Gillingham and Dieng. He's picked up the ball. Can he get his second goal? He goes. Oh, it's just right outside of the right post. And Bradford City. I know what they, I know the game they're trying to play. They're trying to play it out from the back. And uh, at the moment, they've had two moments in this game where it just hasn't worked out for them. They've been depossessed in very dangerous areas. And this is one of them. And Dieng looking for his second goal. He's been a lot of confidence, obviously, from the first. Nearly found the bottom right hand corner there. And Bradford City, I have to say, uh, not impressed me at the back. At the moment, I'm sure normally they do it really well. I'm sure a Bradford City fan will correct me if I'm wrong, but at the moment, it's just not kind of clicking for them at the back. Gillingham nearly doubled their advantage. 
So as Arnold's managed to get the ball on the right hand side, and Jeff is great something here. He's managed to take it around uh, Rydal, who's going to get an opportunity. Puts it across the box. Kajil's take advantage. There's a shot by Nichols. It's blocked again by Bradford. Can Alexander take a shot instead? And it goes over the bar high and wide. And that's pretty much. Uh, I think Bradford. Uh, uh, there's been they've had some ascendancy in the, in this uh, sort of latter stage of this first half, and they've created one or two cook and head away over the bar, for example. But they're, they're making a lot of defensive errors, Bradford, uh, this half, and obviously that's what led to Gillingham's goal. But it hasn't been the best showing for Bradford, and I think the fans would agree they can do better. They did brilliantly coming down a pre-scores and tore us apart. But at the moment, we're not seeing that Bradford City uh, team here at uh, Valley Parade. And uh, Gillingham are just taking some advantage of that. Ideally, they should have done a bit better there, but unfortunately didn't come to fruition uh, any real uh, intent to score. However, the game is still 1-0 to Jills, and hopefully we can see it through the half time. Um, and yeah, it's not a great showing for Bradford for their promotion push. And that is half time. Let's go over to Kieran for his thoughts on this half so far. So as it currently stands, it's Bradford City 0, Gillingham 1. And online, we have Kieran. Hello. So, what did you make of the game so far, Kieran? Oh, we've played brilliantly. We've made we've made Bradford City look like a team that should be lower down in the league. They don't look like automatic promotion contenders against us today. Uh, we've gone out with a bit of freedom, and and honestly, I thought we were going to win this two one. Now I think we're going to win it two 0 well, that is, it's promising to see, but a player that's uh, been really highlighted for me this half has been Dieng. I don't know what your thoughts of him are this game so far. Dieng's been brilliant. His hold up play's been his hold up play's been a bit iffy at times, but that goal he scored was beautiful. Um that whole the whole lead up to that goal was just him. The way it looked like it looked like the goal was oh, it looked like the, the attack had been had ended when it went down into that corner, but but he managed to keep it in and he managed to put it in the back of the net. He's been beautiful. Yeah, it's one of the highlights for me so far this half. But uh, would you change anything for the second half or would you keep it the same? I think I keep it the same. We look good. We look strong. Um, George Lapsley got a yellow card for we're not quite sure why. Um, but um, So he needs to watch out. But other than that, I think we keep it the same as we are. We're attacking well. We're defending well. And um, there's more goals to come from this, from this I think. I hope so. And uh, well, I'm going I'm to stick to your word and hopefully we do come out to new winners. But we'll, uh, we'll catch up and hear you at full time, Kieran. Brilliant. See you later, Reese. So we are underway for the second half of Valley Parade to see if Jills can get something from this game. They're at a good advantage of them being one the up. And uh, I imagine that uh, Mark Hughes would have possibly done the blow dry effect for the Bradford City uh, team at half time. I'm sure we'll see a different Bradford this second half. But let's wait and see. Bradford City coming forward. I think that's Gilead who's managed to hit the ball to the left-hand side and it's Nevers looking to get the ball in the box and Max Amos really far out there. It's just going to be put in by uh, Rydal who then uh, Cook has a header, a goal and it's crept in and Morris should be keeping that one out but it was a good ball in by Rydal who really, Jill should be closing that cross down. It went to Cook and we know he can score but that's probably one of the softest goals he's going to score this season and Bradford are right back in this game and Morris, it looks like he collected the ball on the post and then it just squirmed in on that right hand side and uh, I have to say Morris, he's been brilliant all season. For me, either one of the best players or, or the best player all season for me. And I think it was, it was right down at the boards of the box. Aimer did try and block it. He's leaped well. Mackenzie doing it. And oh, Morris should be doing a little bit better there. I actually thought it was a weak header that was going out for a, a goal kick or being collected by Morris, but it's just squirmed the way through. And I think maybe, just maybe Glenn Morris gave it too much respect and it went on this, uh, went on his left hand post and went in the back of the net. As it is, Cook score for Bradford. It is one apiece. Gilead's picked the ball in the centre. He's looking to get a pass out to the left-hand side. That's uh, uh, Rydell with the ball. We've gone to Nevers. Doing a little bit of footwork here. A little bit, bit of passing triangles. Get the ball into the box. As Rydell finds Nevers. It's a great ball. This could be Bradford going 2-1 up very quickly. And it's just gone wide. I didn't see where the ball went after that, actually. And uh, you can see Nevers trying to <laughs> rig on the crowd there. But I think that was it. Jamie Walker eventually managed to get the shot away. I didn't see where that ball went. I'm not, I, I totally, I want to see where this one went. It just, oh, blimey, it flashed across the, the right-hand side post and Bradford nearly took the lead five minutes into this second half. Brad Bradford really coming out with some in, uh, intent and whatever Mark you said at halftime, it is thoroughly worked as the Bradford City fans behind the goal are really uh, picking up their voices and really getting behind their team now. Still one all, just. 
Oh, great work by Gillingham coming forward. McKenzie's got to try and find some space. He's done well to beat his man. Can he get the shot away? He's been taken down. He takes a shot and it's a decent save by Lewis. And I wonder, and uh, if, if, if McKenzie goes down, that he might get the he might get the foul. I don't want to be that kind of player. He managed to stay on his feet. Uh, and he managed to do really well here. That's uh, you know, If he went down there, it's possible the ref may have given a penalty. But I do like it that players try to stay on their feet. And McKenzie, if he gets on either side of the goalkeeper, surely he puts Gilles 2-1 up. Really good win by McKenzie in the first decent attack Gilles have had this half so far. Also, Davies managed to get the ball on the left-hand side. He did well there as it's going to be crossed in, it looks like, by uh, Rydell to Cook, who just couldn't get his head on it. But it's going to be another opportunity for Bradford. It goes to Halliday on this right-hand side to recycle the attack. It's gone back to Halliday from uh, Banks. Banks has picked up the ball again, and Bradford are building the attack now from this right-hand side, trying to find a way into the box to, to create something to try and get in front of... Uh, from here as it goes over now to Walker, who's doing a bit of work with Cook there. It's excellent passing, and Jill's got some real defending to do. Good tackle, that is. And the attack is starting to shot, and a decent save, that is, by Glenn Morris. I think the perfect is it Banks, who took the shot at the end. Really great work, that is, from Bradford. They weren't they weren't happy that the attack was over. They kept eroding Gillingham's defence to create an opportunity. And it's really good work here by Walker, who, uh, who managed to get the, the ball in play. Good block by, uh, by Masterson. And eventually, it was a decent shot by Banks, but met with Morris, who managed to tip it over the bar to make up for what I think was a mistake in Cook's equaliser. Good work from Bradford. Good defence from Gillingham. Let's hope we can fend off this corner. So we're from the Gillingham with McKenzie on the left-hand side. Can we uh, get a, a goal to... Go ahead, it's going to be uh, flicked out and eventually picked up by McDonald, who's going to try and recycle the play. He's going to give it to Nichols, and Nichols has a lot of pressure there. But he's giving it to McDonald. Can we get the ball in the box to create? So it's a good ball in the box. Can we attack it? Bradford have managed to clear it, and uh, it looks like the attack is going to be over, but it's uh, picked up by Dieng, and that's a little bit of a head tennis game now as Bradford pick up the ball and this could be a counter uh, and that is Banks who gives it over to the left-hand side and we've got Osadibio used to be a Jules player and he's going to stay on his feet it was nearly a foul there it goes into the box and cleared up and away by McKenzie and eventually before it was oh my goodness me right there was a lot happening there but initially I thought it was a foul on Morris by Cook but the referee kept going didn't give the keeper the advantage there and eventually a shot was blocked uh, by McKenzie I think it hit him straight in the face that's a real flurry of a minute or so of, of Gillingham's corner, possibly scoring an attack by Bradford. And uh, it's a great block by McKenzie, actually. And I think it was uh, Jamie Walker eventually had the shot as the corner now is taken by Austin David Bradford looking to get ahead in this game. This is put into the box and cleared away by Tom Nichols. My goodness me, I'm going <laughs> to take a break from this one. I think the highlight is over. But Bradford nearly getting ahead uh, in this second half. Bradford coming forward now with Halliday. He's got to the, uh, support on the right-hand side with Banks, who's going to try and get the ball again in to create a tap for Bradford. He takes a shot, but it goes miles wide. And that's unfortunate for Bradford City as they try and get a win in this game. But luckily for Gillingham, as they try and weather this storm for the last sort of 10 minutes, Bradford have been really on top and coming forward. Jill's really haven't had much going forward the last sort of, of 10 or so minutes. And Bradford looking more likely the team who are going to go on and win this if there is to be a goal. And Scott Banks would be disappointed with himself that he should be a lot better considering what he did earlier to force a save out of Glenn Morris. But it's still Bradford won, Gillingham won. Hopefully we can hang on to get a point to take away from Valley Parade. Banks is coming on this right-hand side again for Bradford. He's done res relatively well there, but matched equally, that is, by McKenzie. But the ball is put in by Halliday, collected by Cook, I think that is, as they're trying to build another attack. Bradford from this left-hand side, it's headed away by uh, um, Masterson, and that could be a penalty that's been given, and the referee has. And Bradford have a great opportunity to take the advantage here. I can't see who made the tackle, but it looked a bit careless for me. Uh, but we'll have to look at the replay. But Bradford have a great opportunity. It is Banks who created the, uh, uh, who drew the foul. Sorry, I can't remember who. I can't. I didn't quite see who that was who, gave, who committed the foul. We'll have a look at the replay now. It's a good ball in. Uh, it's a bit of a nothing one. It's headed away by Masterson, and that is McKenzie who clumsily went to the back of Scott Banks and. In a situation like that, I think the referee's always going to be given a penalty and Jules hopefully can can pray that <laughs> Morris makes a save here and it is uh, a yellow card for Nichols for whatever, for arguing dissent, whatever it may be. But Bradford have an opportunity from the spot. And Cook's going to be taking this penalty. 
to give uh, Bradford an opportunity to go 2-1 up, and he does that in the bottom left-hand corner. It's a great penalty, I have to say. He really found the bottom left-hand corner, and Bradford are in celebration because this really keeps potentially their automatic promotion push alive, uh, but it definitely solidifies their place in the playoff, considering they walk off the pitch of three points. There is still about 10 or so minutes left to play, including injury time, but we'll have to wait and see how it comes out, but it's a great penalty by Cook. We'll look at the replay very, very shortly, no doubt, but eight, uh, is it 17, 18? thousand Bradford City fans in the stadium today with only 300 Jules fans there still a good effort from Jules fans who made the journey up but it looks like Bradford are going to walk away with all three points this afternoon and if you give the penalty to the lead and goal scorer what's he going to do all the time he's going to put it in the back of the net from the penalty spot Glenroy has dived the wrong way unfortunately uh, but it looks like Bradford are on the ascendancy here and looking likely to take away three points from Gillingham at uh, this match this afternoon as it currently stands it's Bradford City 2 Gillingham 1 So Jules could have a chance to get ahead. It's with Berger into Nichols. It takes a shot from distance. Oh, and it's put around the right-hand post by Harry Lewis. It's great work by Hawkins to get to let uh, to let the pass go to Nichols, who had a bit of pace to go through. Took the shot early to try and keep uh, try and get Lewis unaware of the of the motion of the shot, but the snapshot didn't quite work out and it was tipped easily eventually around the post by Lewis. It bounced in front of him as well. He's done well in fairness to goalkeeper, but Jules nearly went level instantly after Bradford going ahead and they have a corner to uh, try and make amends of this. Good, uh, good, good work by Gillingham to get quickly back into this game. The Jill's now coming down this left-hand side and trying to get the ball into the box. The Tutana puts it in. Can we get a shot? Go again! It's Lewis who manages to tip it round the right-hand post. So his perspective, great ball in from the left-hand side by Tutonda. And Nichols can be unfortunate that he hasn't found the back of the net. And Jill's had two golden opportunities to get that ball in the back of the net to draw level. But it just hasn't worked out as Lewis has been really strong in the Bradford goal to keeping his team in this game and potentially winning the points for Bradford this afternoon. So Alexander's got the ball on this left hand side. Jill's got a corner late on as it goes towards the back post. Can Jill's attack the goal? It's bouncing and run! Yes! <laughs> And Jules have scored with Hawkins in the final minutes to equalise it. And I've got to say, Bradford City fans, eight minutes of injury time was a surprise to me as well. I was unsure. Four or five was the maximum I was predicting. So you could feel aggrieved about that. I don't know where he's got that from. Nonetheless, Jules have used that opportunity to get back level in this game. And I've got to say, Craig from Canada, who predicted a 2 all, it has come up roses for you because Jules have equalised in the last few minutes at Valley Parade. Uh, sorry, I had a bit of a, a swallow of my saliva while celebrating that. Lewis couldn't quite get the ball. And he's made two great saves, Lewis, from Nichols, but he couldn't get something on that. And it fell straight to Hawkins, who put it in the back of the net. And Jills have equalised at the death. It's a silence. I can only imagine the crowd at Valley Parade and put in another dent in Bradford's promotion push. Oh, my goodness me. I, <laughs> I have to say, you know, Two all was an interesting result. One would argue that it's fair. One would argue that it's not right. But that's what the score is. It's Gillingham 2, Bradford City 2. So Chaz has got a freak on the left. This will be the last chance at all of this game. Can Jill snatch the win? It goes to back post. That is a terrible free kick by Chair Alexander. As the ref blows for full time. And it is Bradford 2, Gillingham 2. What a game that ended out to be. My goodness me. Let's go over to Kieran to give the final words of this exciting, exciting game. Who would have thought it after a dominant Bradford City second half, we equalised and the game ended 2-2. Brilliant first half performance from us, but Bradford City definitely came out the changing room in the second half, looking like Mark Hughes had given them a talking to. And they looked like the Bradford City that we expected to play against us today. Definitely not as ordinary as they were in the first half. Ollie Hawkins scored a blinding goal at the end of the game, right at the dead. Not sure where the referee found eight minutes of added time, but it doesn't matter because it worked out in our favour. Overall, it's probably a point gained and Bradford two lost. But have we seriously dented their automatic promotion chances? I don't know. Only the last couple of games will tell. But they're definitely a contender to win the playoffs if they get there. Uh, overall, 2-2. Two -two, I'll take that. We're not really playing for anything. Again, I'm going to say that Mark, uh, Neil Harris let us down with very, very late changes. But in the grand scheme of things, it didn't really matter. I would like to see Jaden Clark come on earlier. But other than that, I'll take the point.